Well, greetings, friends, and welcome back. As you know, I like to occasionally do the old acted intro, which uh, let me know if you like those, because they're a lot of fun to do. But today, it's too hot to do one. It got up to 45 degrees. Most of Australia is on fire. And if you haven't had the chance to visit my fair country, it feels a little bit like this. We'll say good morning or afternoon to our Commander Headless sitting in her chair and we look at the spacious interior of the Type 10 which uh, is not only huge, it's about the size of, well, probably at least the Corvette, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but obviously it's double story. So let's see if we can get around and see some stuff. The other reason obviously I've parked right here is for some better lighting because the uh, corridors down there are fairly dark indeed. So let's see what we can see, shall we? For the sake of consistency, we'll start over here as always with our large dinner plate projection of the ship. And over here, the even larger projection of the surrounding area, about 80 centimeters in diameter, of course, projected onto a square, you know, from a square emitter. And the size of that uh, whole thing is about the size, again, just a little bit longer of a single bed. It's the same one as in the Asp Explorer. And this is about the size of a handball, the projection of the sun itself. So around the side of Commander Headless, we can see that Commander Headless is in fact on a plinth that doesn't seem to move as per normal with the standard chair in tow and that there is actually a fair bit of space behind Commander Headless themselves before we actually reach the rear of the cockpit. Now I'm conscious of the fact that uh, my walking around might be slightly hampered by the presence of the Christmas tree there, but we'll see what we can do. So if the rear of the chair was here and I was to be touching the back of the chair here in inappropriate ways, uh, with my back directly towards it, this would be the view, and then obviously you could walk over this way towards the stairs themselves. And in fact, we could reach the stair and probably be standing on the second step at this point here. So that gives you an idea of the length of this deck, which is actually quite long. In terms of looking above you, well, I mean, there's that strut system that goes from the rear here and is connected up above the commander themselves. And this is very obvious in VR, but in 2D it kind of looks like it melds into the canopy cockpit itself, but it's very much separated. It's probably a good three meters between the top of that strut that sits across the top there that I have absolutely no hope of touching and the actual top of the cockpit. You can also see walking to the edge of this platform up here that we can see straight down into uh, the seats where the co-pilots would sit on either side of the pilot's chair, which would be quite fun because from here you could definitely throw jaffers at them if they were doing the wrong thing. Now, this weird camera that puts us out in front of the cockpit itself, I'm not sure why I retracted the hard points, um, is quite interesting. So the cockpit at its narrowest point, I suppose, that you can say, uh, would be from this point right here in real space to this point right here in real space. So still extremely sizable. And from here we can also see something weird. Um, see those ribs up the top above the actual uh, window? See the bottom one there? It's uh, crooked. So that's quite interesting. <laughs> the, the rib itself is probably six meters long. I estimate that if it was made out of metal it would probably weigh three to four hundred kilograms. And it is definitely put on crooked. In fact, now that I look at it, some of the other ones look a bit crooked as well. Okie dokie. And from here, I guess the other interesting part is to look at the way this cockpit is constructed from the outside. So this is a very smooth, lovely material going all the way around the outside skeleton, I suppose, of the cockpit. And then we would have these massive struts. They're probably a good five to six inches in diameter, uh, heading all the way back and around and in that loop that we saw before standing down on the deck. So I figure we may as well start somewhere interesting, which is at the bottom of the stairs behind the actual co-pilot. Now, the difference in height is pretty staggering. Uh, I'm not sure if it's really obvious in 2D, but the difference between that top, the bottom deck there where the co-pilot sits and that top deck there is probably a good six feet to seven feet in height. And then obviously we have these three steps coming down to the lower deck where I'm standing now. 
Now from here we can see that there's a really cool uh, rail uh, that you can obviously stand and walk along and look down into, you know, at this point the abyss of space and the uh, hot inferno of death that is that sun. But also you would have a really nice commanding view here of the loading deck or anything like that if you were loading cargo into this thing or its twin, the Type 9, which obviously is the majority of their purpose. Looking above you, you would have, well, there's not a great deal above there, but I guess you can see some lights and some struts and some various bits and bobs. And other than that, it is relatively boring. Now that is not relatively boring, and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, in the rear of the cockpit itself, you have some of these cupboards, which really don't do a huge amount to uh, give you environmental perspective. Let's try to get closer to them without spewing. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's a fairly standard basic cupboard. Those look like bullet holes, but they're actually supposed to be probably screw holes or rivet holes or something. And down here, we just have, you know, a light. Well, I mean, look, it's designed to be functional, and that's exactly what it is. And if we were to step into the rear of this section, well, these are all just becoming very flat textures. You can see that that's not even a thing. It's just an entirely flat texture before I crash into the Christmas tree and continued here and in fact even becoming lower res. Now these splotches of colour we have seen before in the Type 7 where you remember the uh, entire rear was blackened out as in fact it is over there. So there you can see they've used the same technique by just drawing black on the wall to prevent you from seeing more and just I guess indicating that there is shadow rather than having to you know properly render a light and render a shadow next to it which is lazy but again we're now so far away from the front of the cockpit that most people probably wouldn't care or notice or in fact be able to do, even get back here. Now my suspicion is that this is the back of the hard point and if we stick our head through there we should be able to confirm, there we are, that that is in fact the back of the small hard point that sits next to the canopy so I was to uh, retract that, you'll see it'll slam through my forehead, there we are and then they disappear as the doors shut. So if you ever wanted to know what the inside of the small hard point looked like, well, here it is. And, uh, well, I can sit in quite comfortably. Uh, it would be sort of about there above me. And I'm sorry if you can hear the air conditioner, I would literally melt into a puddle if I didn't have that on. And, uh, yeah, well, I could probably camp out in here, to be honest. It looks like a nice and comfortable spot for me to sit um, and uh, toast some marshmallows. Obviously, deploying the small hard point will go straight into my face again, and out she goes. <laughs> Which, to be honest, is uh, nauseating even for me, and I'm a fairly seasoned veteran at doing this to myself by now. And I might as well poke my head out the side of the uh, small hard point here to show you your first glimpse of the interior, such as it is, of the Type 10. And it is preposterously huge. Uh, if the Anaconda was like flying the outside stands of the stadium, this volume is about the whole inside of the stadium. We can see some low res textures there taking up some space, some grids and greebling and various bits and bobs that we'll try and get to a little bit later on, maybe from the outside in the fighter, and some of the other hard points scattered around, which obviously you wouldn't see in the Type 9. And we can also see the interiors, for want of a better word, of the corridors that are upstairs next to the commander. And we'll try and stick our heads in there a little bit from the other side as well. But you can see from here already that they are just a plain texture that ends in a black blob. And back to this little elevator area. If you cared or were ever interested in seeing what's under here, let's have a look. You can see that there's just a bit of empty space with some more of that low res texture and not a huge what else. Alright, so as for this door slash elevator slash thing itself, let's have a step inside. And we can see that it's just, well, it's a blackened texture and there is another level above us. Seemingly an elevator that would come down from up there is what it looks like from down here at least. And a lot of those blackened textures that are just hiding stuff. Uh, yeah, so the inside of this wall is entirely black up until this very quick cut point you see here. And again, this is exactly what they did in the Type 7. So. There is no way to see what the details are in there, but clearly this seems to be a sort of um, tooth gear driven kind of elevator. It does kind of feel like the, the uh, elevator is going to come down on my head, so <laughs> I'm going to get out of this spot. 
But over here, this is just a carbon copy of the previous side, exactly the same. So there's not much point going into that. Again, you can see the rear of that small hard point poking out there as you could on the other side. So here we are sort of floating a little bit above the ground and approaching the co-pilot chair down here. So yeah, certainly from down here, it would take a fair bit of neck craning to be able to look up and see the commander sitting up there. And you can certainly touch this little wall that's sitting along here. I would say that the co-pilot's console here is about the same size as the Asp Explorer pilot who sits underneath the commander themselves. From the seat itself, I could definitely reach out and I'd be touching the uh, canopy wall just here, so it's very close to you. And over here we are right next to the hard point, which is kind of cool, where you can see a bit of light emanating from the back of it, which obviously we didn't see while we were sitting in the hard point itself, but it and all its spectacular friends create quite a bit of a light show as they fire away, and uh, obviously from here that would look really cool in real life, or in VR. And here we are in the other co-pilot seat, and again, the story is much the same here. We could run our hands, obviously I couldn't because I was sitting down, but we could run our hands along the underside or the edge of that, uh, that stand that the command is on. There would be the corner, so it runs all the way to back here until it takes its corner there. So very large and substantial. Great view down here, and again, another little quick view into the rear there, where you can see the, uh, the elevator would kind of end in that block down the bottom. And again, if we reached out, we could definitely run our hand along the inside of the glass, which at this point would be rather toasty. Now, if we hop out in the fighter and have a look at the underneath of the cockpit is over there. This is the front of the Type 10 itself. We see the little entry door fairly close up, again, because I'm cheating using the fighter. Now, you can see here that there is not actually a huge amount of space between the door itself and the edge of that little uh, balcony, I guess and there is no way to get over the top of the balcony. So I'm not sure what that door would be used for, but it certainly doesn't seem to be an entry door per se. The textures on the balcony are also fairly low res, as you can see there, and the door itself, uh, well, obviously I'm below it because I'm just uh, outside the fighter, but the door itself I would estimate to only ever come up to about my chest height, so it's probably five foot, maybe not even, in height. Let's see if we can stick our head through it. Ah, there we go. Uh, so it leads pretty well to the hard point on the underside of the Type 10's cockpit, or just behind the cockpit indeed. And uh, yeah, probably could be used as an entry, I suppose. There'd be some walkways around the sides, but other than that, it isn't seeming to be a specific entry. You can also see up there that they have bottled the ends of those corridors up near the commander, but that they are just a flat texture without any uh, details in there. But the weird trend of being able to see through the bottoms of ships uh, continues, and I'm not sure why that is the case, but seemingly Frontier allow us to stick our heads through the undersides of ships, but not the tops or the fronts or any other bit, which is kind of bizarre. So there, all the way over there, <laughs> is that entire cockpit assembly, which is shimmering and crapping itself in the sun, but you can see the basic forms. So we are probably half, well no, no we're not. We're probably a third of the way through the ship, all the way back here. And this thing is truly gargantuan. Um, very hard to explain the size of this thing without just saying it is probably like the interior of a soccer pitch maybe size, the entire thing, or maybe slightly less than a soccer pitch, but it is. Preposterous. I mean, as you know, this thing trying to fit out the uh, the uh, letterbox doesn't really fit. Uh, it just barely fits out the letterbox. Um, so it is truly a gigantic thing. Those things look like missiles. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Maybe fuel tanks or something, but certainly not missiles. There's a weird, extremely low res panel there that just seems to be hovering and doing nothing. I suspect that we're about to crash into the fighter bay. We'll soon find out when we stick our head through here. Nope, can't go bay. My mistake. And the fighter bay is up there. Right, well, Frontier have tried to beat me, but I have worked out a way to at least get a view in the side here. So uh, I've had to reset myself all the way through my cameras and lights. Um, and we can see 
I can get a bit closer without smashing something. Um, through here, we can see a keyboard over there on that panel. This is literally about as close as I can possibly get. And then we have a bit of a view inside this area, and this is kind of as good as it's going to get. The, the floor is about at my chest height. So you can see, as we saw from the bottom there, that the corridor is just plain black, and it ends just in a black door, and there is unfortunately no texture or no way for us to get closer into that area. So yes, unfortunately, there is no hidden secret around the back there, which is a bit of a shame. Also, you can see that these ribs from the outside, uh, which also seem to be a little bit crooked, but we'll leave that alone, uh, <laughs> sort of textured themselves into that corridor and through that corridor. So again, the sizes haven't really been worked out very well, and uh, they're poking their way through that uh, wall up there, as you can see right there, they look like shark fins. Aha! They said it couldn't be done, but here I am, a floating head on the second story behind where the commander sits and hopefully we can see a bit more of this area over here without throwing up. So, if we step this way we can see the top part of this elevator which does actually have a floor. So there you go, I was right that from underneath uh, down there where the second level is does actually have a floor and that elevator looks like it's just a, an open space that would head down. There are no grab handles, so again in zero G that might be a little challenging, but you would step from, uh, I guess, into the elevator from up here or vice versa and uh, head over to the commander's chair itself. <laughs> this feels really bizarre. It looks, it's like I'm just a, a rodent crawling on the floor. And through the back here, what I always thought was a corridor heading around to the left, you can see that unfortunately it is just a bit of a box Presumably it's supposed to head around that way anyway, but uh, I guess they haven't bothered and they've just uh, made it a flat black texture again using the same trick as in the Type 7, just blackening it out to make you not be able to see anything. Obviously there are, are lights there, but with it being blackened you could be excused for thinking they're far down a left turning corridor. Other than that, there doesn't seem to be anything else in that space. If I lift myself up, there we go. Nothing else in that space other than some uh, fairly flat textures and not even really any greebling, so yes, nor a door. There's a lot of these uh, very low textured, well, just, just lights that are textures but don't emit light. There's a lot of that going on in the back of this ship to, uh, I guess, give you accents. Let's see if we can shove our head through this wall here. Oh man, this is very nauseating. All right, I'm gonna have to climb into the Christmas tree. Yes, there we are. Never let it be said that I don't suffer for these videos. Oh, tracking is crapping itself. But there we are, we are now inside the uh, corridor. Let's orientate ourselves. So that's, <laughs> that's where the commander sits over there. And we're now through the wall around the corner in this corridor here. Oh, tracking does not like me very much at all. Come on. So we're in just a completely blackened out corridor and you can see that the textures just end and then there is that semblance or a hint of a door at the end. But again, no textures and a bit of a gap by the looks of things where you can see some stars through up the top there and some lights that are indented into the wall there seem to be some textures floating in front of those lights or the lights are maybe angled hard to tell from... no, there's something in front of the lights and the lights are flat in front of it uh, but anyway, that is the corridor around the corner that doesn't actually lead anywhere uh, but does end in a blackened door and even though it's on a bizarre angle, that is the view you would have going into the uh, door, in, into that corridor itself. Uh, again, starts the blackened texture just there, just beyond your view. And it gives you just enough titillation and sensation that there is something there that you really want to go around the corner. But uh, there we are, I have thoroughly broken your immersion and you now know what is there. And then again, we have those uh, shark fins coming out from the front of the cockpit that are an incomplete uh, version of those vents, which are probably on an angle. We're now in the Type 9 uh, for comparative purposes, so let's go check it out. So originally I was gonna make this its own video, but uh, immediately as I swapped to the Type 9, you can see the immediate issue, which is that it is precisely the same as the Type 10 in every way, shape, and form, other than it doesn't have those weird slopey things and therefore they're not on a weird angle up the top. But other than that, the interior of the cockpit, the positioning of the co-pilots and the weird hallways and the elevator are all exactly the same. 
Uh, although this doesn't seem to have fins poking out into the hallway because of the different construction of the front of the Type 9. And if we do our impression of the rat on the floor again, you can see that this again is entirely the same with the single exception that the lights aren't white, they are in fact blue. But other than that, the positioning, the texturing, the everything, and the blackened halls with the indication of a door but not actually a door is the same as in the Type 10. The only thing we didn't do in the Type 10 is have a look at the landing gear. Uh, <laughs> And as you can see, they are preposterously huge. We're talking probably four stories high. Uh, yeah, that is mental. Probably you could, uh, that looks more like an apartment building than it does a set of landing gear. Uh, you could probably house several families inside those struts. So yeah, seemingly the lights in the Type 9 are blue, but other than that, there is no perceptible difference between the Type 9 and the Type 10 in any of the areas. Even the hard points are sticking out in the same spot and uh, the uh, elevator is the same. Just uh, slight coloring differences basically is the only difference. Other than that, it is entirely the same ship, just with less hard points. Isn't that right, Commander Headless? So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the view of the Type 10 and the Type 9 side by side and comparing the two together. They are both hulking beasts and a bit of a joy to fly if you're like me and you're a bit of a cargo runner, which is pretty much where I earned most of my money, if not my rank. Well, that's it for me from this one. I hope you enjoyed that comparative look between the Type 10 and Type 9. As you see, it would be ridiculous for me to make an entirely different video about the Type 9. But I really hope you enjoyed that one and it revealed some secrets of those hidden hallways and doorways that, uh, you know, I've always wondered about as well. So until next time, I'll see you in the black. Fly safe, Commanders.